about the D558-2, the Skyrocket, it got very little notoriety, and yet it was the one airplane of all the research airplane series that really delivered for the design of the whole next several generation of airplanes. The 50th anniversary was coming up. The Air Force was spreading a lot of notoriety about how they were going to celebrate the 50th anniversary with another Mach number, and it just occurred to us that it would be kind of an interesting thing if the Air Force got nudged over a little bit on all of this thing. So uh, we were, of course, turned down by headquarters because we didn't do that kind of thing at NACA. And I'm kind of sorry I won because what I did is I got a, the Navy representative on the base here named Perkins to speak to the Navy, and I also got Mary and Carl to speak for me in Washington. Next thing they knew, that Dryden had sent Williams a authorization to try for one Mach 2 flight. We thought it'd be kind of cute if we beat Jaeger in the Air Force to Mach 2 with a Navy airplane. They never for a moment thought that that was possible, so they didn't give us any consideration. In fact, we probably got a little bit of derision out of them for even thinking we could. And it was a very friendly competition. You know, this base is made, of, made up of from the top on down at that time of fighter pilots, and, and they're competitive. <laughs> Jaeger always claimed that he was first to exceed Mach 2. And I'd climb his frame and he'd say, well, you were first to get there, but I exceeded it. <laughs> and that's the way it was around here. Herman Ankenbrook, one of the engineers that was on the airplane, worked out analytically that we could go about 2.01. Everything working perfectly and getting the advantage of cold weather, cold day, even wind shear that we, we were expected to get. And that's what we were going for. Fortunately, I lucked out that day and managed to fly what he did, and it came out right on the money. I mean within a half a percent. It's a beautiful airplane. It is, it had very beautiful, nice lines. It, uh, a lot of airplanes, particularly the research airplanes, uh, Beauty was not a, a driving factor. It just accidentally came out uh, out that way. And the air likes smooth lines on an airplane. So uh, it and the X-1 probably were the, aerodynamically the cleanest airplanes of the lot that we made. The Skyrocket ought to be given a lot of credit that it's never had. And uh, that whole high-speed flight station that we were doing that at, was just one hangar and a couple of butler buildings, and we were flying more flight frequency there than we ever did again when we moved to the, to the new lab. It was a very tight-knit group of people.